Here's an overview I want you to pay attention to. So here is how form of 4797 looks like. So we are speaking here about sales of business property. So you want to put your name. So first name, last name. You got to put your identifying number. So this can be your social or if you don't have a social, it's got to be your TIN, your tax identification number. Do not put your uh, your EIN here. So you want to first put your uh, your social. And you want to, so line one, A, you want to enter the gross proceeds from sales or exchanges reported to you this year. So we are putting here in this hypothetical scenario, we have $50,000 and line two does not apply to us in terms of makers. And line three, we are putting a 10 grand. So 10 grand actually, actually relates to the, the, the total account when it comes to losses. So part one is pretty straightforward here. So what you want to do is you want to uh, go up more and granularity when it comes to the losses. So we are speaking here about uh, basically not losses, but we're talking about the sales of business property. So this could be a loss or gain. So line two, you have the description, the date acquired, the date sold, the gross sale price, and uh, the sales price, and the, the uh, depreciation allowed or allowable uh, since acquisition, and the cost of other basis plus uh, improvements. And uh, so the gain or capital loss in this case here is 25,000. So for the first line, for the second line, the uh, all-terrain vehicle, we have uh, a, uh, an asset that was acquired in 2009, and the date sold was uh, January 1st, January 21st, 2023. And basically the same calculation here, we have 23,000 for the gross sales price, and we had the, the depreciation allowed or allowable since acquisition, 7,000. So the cost or, or other basis, 40 grand. So the loss here, we had a 40,000, 40, uh, not 40. Ten thousand dollars in loss. So again, there is no uh, again, if any, for from uh, forty six eighty four line thirty nine, we put two thousand. And I'll speak quickly. I'll speak later on about forty six eighty four. For section twelve thirty one gain for from installment sales sixty two fifty two line twenty six or twenty or uh, thirty seven three thousand. I'll speak about that briefly later on also. And so line five, same thing. We put the amount that corresponds. And uh, line seven, when you do the math here, it, it amounts to uh, 15,000. And uh, non recaptured net section 1231 losses from prior years, 10 grand in our case here. And when you do the math on line nine, this you have 5,000. And in part two, you have ordinary gains and losses. So basically, here what happens here is that uh, when we talk about ordinary versus uh, not ordinary, uh, basically, you're talking about tools that you bought this year and then you actually sold this year for instance and in our case we have three thousand by the way boss welcome back to the show it's really a pleasure to have you here make yourself comfortable you are going to enjoy today's conversation And uh, part three, I want you to look on the screen here. Part three is not applicable to our situation here, but I wanted to show it anyway so we have a clear idea what kind of uh, details we, we are looking at. So part three, we're going to leave, leave this on the screen for a few seconds so you can see what it looks like. Pro you actually have to detail all the info about property. So property A, property B, property C, property D. If you have more properties, just uh, attach uh, more, uh, more documents. And uh, next, I'm showing you again uh, another form. So we have a uh, part five. So part, part four, rather, part four. So you first talk about the summary, of the, give the summary of part three gains, and then you, you move on to part four. So part four actually has to do with the recapture amounts under section 179. And this doesn't apply to our case here, but hey, listen, if you have any question, please let us know in the comment section and we'll certainly get back to you. I wanted to quickly talk to you about the sales and the other dispositions of assets. So publication 544, that really goes into details about certain some of the things that I'm talking about. So you have a clear idea. So when we talk about section 1245, for instance, 1245 is actually part of the, R, the internal revenue code that covers the applicable tax rate for gains from the sale or transfer of a depreciable and amortizable property. And it applies to certain types of real or tangible business property that have been held by the business for more than 12 months. So we're speaking about capital gains or losses. And uh, so section 1245 outlines what properties are included in this treatment and when the ordinary income tax code applies to the, to the sale instead of the capital gains tax. So it, it's one of those things where you have to really have a clear idea. Section 1250 is, uh, this is basically, uh, 
is uh, is a rule establishing that the IRS will tax a gain from the sale of a depreciated real property as an ordinary income if the accumulated depreciation exceeds the, the depreciation calculated with a with straight line method. And uh, so Section 1250 bases the amount of tax due on the property type or whether this is a residential or non-residential real estate while also factoring in how many months the filer own the property in question. So this is one of those things you have to have a clear idea. So the different types of property for a form 4797, you have a property held for more than one year, property held less than one year, section 1245, section 1250, section 1252. In that case, you also have section 1254, Section 1255. So you have all kinds of uh, property tabs that relate to uh, this specific uh, 4797 form. By the way, boss, I want to quickly remind you of today's topic. We are having a conversation about uh, Form 4797. Let me talk to you about the steps you need to really take here when it comes to Form 4797. So uh, basically, it's really important to understand that Form 4797 is used for taxpayers to categorize the property they've sold, whether it's rental property, business property, or other types of assets. This classification is essential because it really determines the tax treatment of the sale. Okay, And so rental property sales fall under the cat category of Section 1231 assets on form 4797 and uh, so 1231 include depreciable property used in a trade or business and real property used in a trade or business and held for more than one year so uh the purpose of form 4797 really it really serves to uh, report sales or exchanges determine actually uh the gain or loss classifying transactions and also in terms of tr tax treatments let's talk a little bit about that so when we talk about reporting sales or exchanges, Form 4797 is used to report the details of sales, exchanges, or involuntary conversions of business property. So this includes both tangible assets like buildings and equipment, as well as intangible assets like patent and uh, copyrights. And determining the gain or loss, now the form is used to calculate and report the gain or loss realized from the sale or exchange of business property. It takes into account the original cost or basis of the property and the amount received from the sale in this case and any depreciation or deductions claimed over the asset's useful life. And uh, when it comes to classifying transactions and Form 4797 requires taxpayers to classify their transactions into different categories based on the nature of the property being sold, right? So these categories include Section 1231, as I said earlier. And uh, so again, when we talk about 1231 transactions, we're speaking about sales of depreciable property. You also have capital assets and you also have ordinary income assets. In terms of uh, tax treatments, depending on the classification of the, the uh, transaction, the tax treatment may vary. Form 4797 helps determine whether the gains or losses should be treated as ordinary income subject to a specific tax rates or as long-term capital gains or losses, which may have different tax implications. And it's also important to note that Form 4797 is actually used primarily for business property sales. So for personal property transactions, such as the sale of a personal residence, a different form such as the Form 8949, or in some cases, Schedule D may be used. Let's talk about the benefits of Form 4797 here. So you have uh, all kinds of benefits that you, need, you can actually you can think about. So first of all, you have uh, tr taxation of capital gains. So Form 4797 helps you as a taxpayer accurately report and calculate capital gains or losses from the sale of business property. So by property reporting those gains or losses, individuals or businesses can ensure they are paying the, their correct amount of tax on these transactions. You also have deductible losses. So let's say if you sell business property at a loss, and this can happen depending on the transaction, you can deduct the loss on Form 4797. And what happens here, the loss can actually help you offset other taxable income, reducing your overall tax liability. And so deductible losses can help minimize the tax impact of selling assets at a loss. You also have Section 12, 1231 treatment, which I've spoken at length about that. So 
Form 4797 allows taxpayers to take advantage of the special tax treatment provided for Section 1231 assets. So se Section 1231 assets include depreciable property used in a trade or business, such as real estate and equipment. So when these assets are sold at, at a gain, the gain can be treated as long-term capital gain, which generally results in a lower tax rate than ordinary income. And uh, you also have netting of gains and losses. So Form 4797 provides a mechanism, really, for netting gains and losses from the sale of business property. So if you have had multiple sales of business property during the tax year, you can combine the gains and losses on the form to determine your overall net gain or loss. This is kind of cool. And this netting provision can actually help optimize the tax consequences of uh, multiple transactions if those are applicable to your situation. And you also have a, a reporting of a Section 179 and a bonus depreciation. So if you claim Section 179 expensing or a bonus depreciation on business property that is is uh, subsequently sold, Form 4797 allows you to report the recapture of those deductions. So this ensures that the, the tax benefits received from those deductions are properly accounted for when the property is uh, subsequently sold. And uh, so simplified reporting, Form 4797 provides a structured format for reporting the sale of business property. So this is kind of cool. By the way, boss, I want to quickly remind you of today's topic. We are having a conversation about uh, Form 4797. So who is really eligible to file Form 4797? Let's talk about that. So we have a clear idea about the categorization that we're looking at here. So you have all kinds of uh, taxpayers. You have sole proprietorships. You have partnerships. You have LLCs. You have S corporations. And then you have a C corporations. So when we talk about uh, those, uh, th those uh, taxpayers, we, we have to really uh, detail certain things here. So when we talk about uh, sole proprietorships, individuals who operate a business as a sole proprietor or sell and or and sell or exchange business property may file form 4797 to report the transaction. Partner partnerships that sell or exchange uh, business property may use form 4797 to report the sale or exchange. LCs, so depending on the tax classification of uh, an LC, it may be treated as a partnership or a disregarded entity for tax purposes. So if an LLC is classified as a partnership or has elected to be taxed as a partnership, you can use Form 4797 to report the sale or exchange of business property. S Corporation, also, also if you have an S Corporation that disposes of business property, they may file the Form 4797 to report the sale or exchange. C Corporations that, are, that also sell or exchange business property can use Form 4797 to report the transaction as well. So to, in terms of uh, completing the form 4797, basically you want to gather the necessary information. So collect all of the relevant information and documents related to the property, the property sale, including the purchase price, date of purchase, sale price, date of sale, and any associated expenses. And then uh, you want to understand the different parts of Form 4797. So we are speaking about uh, Part 1, Part 2. I went through the details before, so, so, you, so you have a clear idea. You'll have Part 3, and you have the summary of Part 3 and Part 4. You want to complete Part 2 or parts, Part 1 or Part 2, depending on your, your situation. Step 4, you want to fill in the required information. Step number 5, you want to calculate the gain or loss. Step 6, you want to complete the remaining, remaining sessions. Step number 5, Step number 7, rather. You want to check for accuracy and you want to sign the form. Please check. You want to sign the form. It's really important. Otherwise, the IRS will not process your, uh, your, your form. You want to attach additional documentation if required. And you want to retain a copy for your records. You never know. And you want to file the IRS tax form 4797. You can file electronically or you can file uh, you know, manually. It's totally possible. It depends on you. Let me give you a couple of special considerations when filing Form 4797. So basically, there are several considerations to keep in mind. So you have the net, the nature of the property. You have to think also about the classification of gains or losses. And we have to talk about reporting depreciation. So basically, we, we have all kinds of configuration here. So when we talk about the nature of the property, Form 4797 is specifically used to report the sale, exchange, 
or involuntary conversion of property used in a trade or business, as well as the sale of depreciable or amortizable property. So it, it does not apply to the sale of personal property. This is important to really specify here. And also when we talk about classification of gains or losses, different rules apply depending on whether the property sold is considered ordinary or capital. And so again, generally property using a trade or, or business is considered ordinary while investment property is considered capital. And the classification, the classification affects how gains or losses are reported and taxed. Okay. You also have re reporting depreciation. So if the property being sold was previously depreciated, you must report the uh, depreciation deductions taken in previous years. This is actually done by completing part three of uh, form 4797, which involves calculating the, the uh, depreciation recapture amount. You got to really pay attention to that recapture sort of calculations. You also have uh, section 1231 transactions. So this actually, uh, again, uh, relates to the sale or exchange of certain business property, including real estate and depreciable assets. If you have a 1231 transactions, you may be eligible for a special tax treatment, such as the potential to offset gains with losses. You also have involuntary conversions. So if your property was involuntarily converted, let's say through theft, destruction or condemnation, and you received insurance or other compensation, you need to report the transaction on Form 4797. Different rules apply for gains or losses in involuntary conversions. You also have multiple transactions. So if you had multiple transactions involving the sale or exchange or business property, you must report each transaction separately on separate lines uh, of forms 4797 and partner or shareholder's share. So if you are a partner in a partnership or a shareholder in an S corporation, you generally do not file form 4797 individually. Instead, what happens here is that you sh your share of the partnerships uh, or S corporations gain or losses is reported on your Schedule K-1, which you receive from the entity. Let's talk about filing deadlines and extensions uh, on Form 4797. So again, it's one of those things where everything depends upon uh, the uh, the situation but generally the 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 uh, the filing deadline for your federal income tax return is april 15th and that's also the the deadline for filing form 4797 okay however if you need more time to file your tax return you can request an extension by filing form 4868 and uh, so and this extension actually gives you a six more months so you are able to file your uh, your taxes by october 15th okay and one thing I want to say here is that when the IRS grants you an extension, it does not it does not extend the deadline for paying any taxes on. So when you owe taxes, you know you you really if you anticipate rather owning taxes, it's generally recommended that you need to estimate your tax liability and make a payment by the original deadline, April 15, to avoid the penalties and interest. So there are some common mistakes you need to avoid while uh, filing for a. Uh, 4797 and uh, what i want to say here is that you know we have all kinds of, of mistakes first of all you know you have an incorrect classification inaccurate cost basis ignoring depreciation recapture in some cases here forgetting to report installment sales overlooking section 1231 gains and losses omitting necessary supporting documentation failing to seek professional assistance this can happen okay but long story short it's one of those things where you have to see what really applies to you and uh, so form form 4797 can be utilized for reporting the sale or transfer of uh, capital assets that are not already documented on schedule d by the way though because uh, some uh, some of our viewers were asking uh, the uh, the uh, the difference if you will between schedule d and uh, form 4797 so basically the difference is that schedule d is primarily for reporting capital gains and losses from investment securities while form 4797 is for reporting gains and losses related to property used in a trade or a business such as rental property and business assets so basically uh, those those two are assets but they have different uh, like they have a different nature if you will and uh, so it, the, the the sale of rental property is typically uh, reported on form 4797 so you at least there you have the clear clear sort of segregation of uh, data and the passive the passive activity adjustments is used to calculate the tax consequences 
of uh, disposing of a passive activity such as the sale of a rental property, this adjustment can, can result in a, the release of uh, previously suspended losses, allowing, allowing you to offset them against any gain from the sale. So at least there you are, you are made whole, so to speak. Okay. And uh, in terms of having a second, the sale of a second home go to form, uh, go on form 4797, it really depends. If the second home was used for rental purposes or if you previously claimed depreciation on the property, the sale should be reported on form 4797. And in such cases, the property is treated as a business or investment property and form 4797 is used to report the sale and calculate any gain or loss as well as account for any depreciation recapture. Thank you so much for your attention. I really appreciate it. Let me do a quick recap here. So today's conversation, I spoke to you about uh, Form 4797. I gave you the overview. I give you the steps. And now I'm, do, I'm doing uh, the recap. Thank you so much. God bless you. I'll see you next time. Until then, remember, stay marvelous.